Okay, we have finally arrived at the margin theory. All that to get back to margins, right? Um, now, as I mentioned uh, earlier, you know, VC dimension's great. You can calculate it sometimes. But Vapnik, he wanted something, some quantity in there that was even more direct than the VC dimension. And what he wanted in there is margins. Um, so the question is, how is he going to get the margin into this bound? And that's where the math gets uh, quite a bit tricky. In any case, he, he defines a set of linear classifiers that are called gap tolerant, okay? Gap, gap tolerant classifiers. And I'm not gonna define them precisely because it gets really complicated. Um, and these gap tolerant classifiers require a margin of delta between points of opposite classes. And the points are also forced to live in a ball of uh, diameter D, okay? So the class of functions is fairly limited since they not only need to classify the points correctly with with this uh, margin of delta, but since all the points are restricted to live in this sphere, um, then you know it, you know, kind of keeps keeps things. It, it kind of prevents you from being able to shatter uh, data, right? So uh, you can imagine that if we're forced to have these large margins, keeping all the points within the ball then maybe the class would have lower complexity, right? There's not so much that, so many points that it could classify correctly. So perhaps a lower VC dimension. And so that's exactly what Vapnik proved. He said that um, for data that's in R, that's in P, P dimensions, the VC dimension H of linear gap tolerant classifiers with a gap of delta belong to a sphere of diameter D is bounded by this inequality. Okay, so this says that the VC dimension is upper bounded by one over the margin squared. Okay, so if we have a large margin, we necessarily have a small VC dimension. And if you didn't have gap tolerance, like if you, if you set that delta equal to zero, well, what happens um, is that the minimum of those two terms is actually just P. And so um, you end up back with a VC dimension of P plus one, which is exactly where we were before with the linear classifiers. Um, so, uh, if you include the margin, you get something that's strictly better than if you don't. And, uh, you know, I'm going to put a disclaimer on this whole uh, video because, you know, that, that there was no version of this proof that uh, was written in a way I could understand, okay? So it, it isn't in the, the proof is not in the notes. Um, but it does get Vapnik exactly where he wants to go with this bound, right? So if you take this and put it into the VC bound uh, here, then you, um, so here I'm, I'm upper bounding the VC dimension by this quantity that, um, that's for these gap tolerant classifiers, then what you get is essentially an upper bound on the true risk by empirical risk and margin, okay? Uh, cool. So um, yeah, so here now the margin is controlling the, the simplicity or the capacity of our function class. And so although this bound, as I mentioned, although it's too loose to be directly minimized, it really gives us in some sense a complete justification of the margin theory for support vector machines, right? Minimize empirical risk, maximize margins, and all will be good. All right, so anyway, there's Vladimir again. Amazing guy, really inspiring work. Thanks, Vladimir.